What's up, Tessus, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Top Talk. with your host, Apollo Khan and... Yours truly, Prince Dunn. Yes, Top Talk, a new flavor. Uh, we got some new music for Top Talk. Usually I do it by myself, but this right here is going to be uh, a brief update on MMA. Usually we uh, have Tessu Talk MMA with predictions and reviews after uh, pay-per-views or you know, big cards. But now we're going to have Top Talk, which updates you with the top news of the MMA world and what's going on today. Prince Dunn, you got any news? What's the Top Talk? Damn, what about what about Stipe versus Francis Ngannou? That's the big one right there. Like, um, I know it's, the fight's been announced maybe a week and a half now, but, man, we never got a, a chance to, to kind of give our take and touch on that, man. Cause, um, I don't know who's going to win now, Apollo. What you think? Uh, that, that that is a toss up. Um, by the way, Prince Dunn is is uh, right now on the road. So if you hear any kind of you know sounds or horns or anything like that, that's because Prince Dunn is being escorted somewhere on the road. Um, exactly, man. Exactly, exactly. Everywhere I go, I'm, I'm getting chauffeured. <laughs> Come on, um, I'm on a, on a, on a top-secret test <laughs> In the SUV? Um, yeah, Francis and Stipe, you're right. This is hard to call because these two are these two guys are are serious punchers. Uh, I think Francis' uh, chin hasn't been tested yet, from what I know. And I think Stipe chin has been tested, which it has. Oh, yeah, I know that for a fact. It has been tested. And the thing about with Stipe is that he got power, but we also know he has a chin that can be very, very, very vulnerable. Uh, so the thing is, one second. Hold on. Okay. Make sure our, all our uh, volumes are equalized. But, yes, so Stipe – he he got the chin that has been tested and he has dropped, um, I think more than once. So that's why I think I will go with Francis on this fight. Not saying that he has he does not have a glass jaw, but I we we don't know about him. Like he's still a mystery to everybody because nobody has really taken him, you know, to his limit to see what he's capable of. And that's the, that's a scary thing to go in here against a guy that actually can finish you that you don't know how what's his limit and where you, you can take him to break him down and i think stipe has a patience to do it but and he's can he figure that puzzle out without getting knocked out that's my question so you said that you don't think that i, I know because it's like it's almost like you can't let him touch you man like that's that's crazy you know, like he, like you can't let him touch you, or if he touch you, he's gonna hurt you, and if he hurts you, he's gonna finish you. That's that's what's crazy, and uh, it depends on how Stipe decides to fight, man. If you look, watch how Stipe fought over him, like certain fights, man, he come after his opponent. You know what I mean? Like he's not always patient. He can fight patient, but since he's been champ, he's been more so aggressive, and and he's finishing a lot of these fights in the first round. You know. So, but that's when Francis is the most dangerous, and that's when he's likely to get caught with something. So it all depends on Stipe's game plan, man. I think yeah. I, I don't see him coming straight at like yeah. that though. I yeah. see him putting on his putting on his putting on his fucking wrestling tights and going out there and trying to you know what I mean, trying to wear him out maybe the first round and see if his arms get tired enough to where some of the steam come off those punches, you know. Cause, I mean, you, I don't care, man. He, he can knock out anybody on the planet, man. You, you know, I mean, he could knock out a horse. Yeah, like put an elephant out there, man. You know, Catch the elephant behind the ear, man. The elephant would be wild to be <laughs> fight. This this fight is not going to the five going five rounds, and I'm glad they did this <laughs> fight because it would have been risky to let Steve H. I'm mean, not Steve A., but Francis try to build his reputation up through somebody else. And you never know, he probably get exposed and get caught or Stipe probably challenge somebody and lose the title. But if you know you got a guaranteed fireworks, or not even fireworks, fucking nuclear warheads dropping on heads, you know, in an octagon, why not let it happen and just you know, fuck all the politics of who should be ranked and who should pass, surpass somebody to be ranked? So I'm glad they're having this fight. I can't wait for it. And I'm glad it's happening right in the corner, which is January. That's fucking amazing. 
I agree, man. I think this is a, you, know, I, you rarely hear me say this, man, but that's just kudos to the UFC for giving Francis the title shot over. Like, Kane to be ready, man. Kane to be ready by, I think, March. So, like, they could have waited until, like, late February, March, and gave it to Kane, but they decided to give it to Stipe because the Kane fights will always be there. Whenever Kane comes back, whoever the champion is, that's what he's fighting. Like, the days of Kane, like, sharpening up, warm up fight, those days are over. His next fight will be a championship fight. You Whether can't. it's Stipe or Francis and Ganu, I, I think it's smart to do Ganu. And like the worst thing that could happen if you like, all right, we'll give Ganu one more fight, and you give him like Mark Hunt, Watson, like or you know what I mean? Or you fuck around and give him Verdum, and Verdum get him to the mat tapping. That's the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, you know, uh, because now you go get you know what I mean? You go get a guy like Mark Hunt again, or you go get a guy like um, you know, having Verdum again. Yeah. Or reach over Doom again, you know? yeah. Or and, Black and, Beast would have beat him. You like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck, you know. And Kane's not reliable though. Can, 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 they about Kane is like, you can't. And Dana White did that before. Wait to give Kane an opportunity to get somebody, and it's like Kane fucking gets injured, and it's like that was a waste of of of, of a booking for a other good match, another good match, other than him than him getting booked, and. They're stuck with, you know, fucking, you know, a month wasted because Kane got injured again. It's just like he's so fucking accident prone. It's, it's, it's horrible. But anyway, uh, what else do you have? You, uh, by the way, please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell and like and subscribe and leave your comments. I mean, you got any comments on this Stipe Mioche and Francis uh, matchup coming in January? Then leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think. And, uh. Yes, subscribe and like. What else, what else do you have for us, uh, Chris Dunn? Man, with GST, I know we touched on him a little bit yeah. when we did our review show. Yeah. Um, but, man, what do you think? What do you think is next for GSP? You know, he let the bell go. You know, so now Robert Whitaker, you got Robert Whitaker versus Duke Rockhold in Australia. We, we go touch on that a little bit, too. Oh, so so what do you think is next for GSP, man? You, See, see, I didn't even know about that. Yeah, and, I, and I'll say this, Apollo. But yeah, no, yeah, yeah, in Australia. I believe that I'm not sure when that fight is. I want to say February. It's soon, sooner than later. Oh so, yeah. yeah, yeah. The the thing so, about I, it, is, you, you can say for the first time, say for the first time in a while, you gonna have all three guys get ready for a fight. Because um, you know, on that on that on that Stipe, that is the guy called you know DC, um, Volcano Ostermir. On the undercover, that's a co main event, you know. So, you got you got that getting ready for this segment. He's ready for this fight in late January. And, you know, I think Kane will be ready in March. He's already in there helping the guys and uh, getting working it with him. Be too, a be fight next week. So, like, all the guys are in the gym. That's the first time in years, man. So, that's, when those guys are all in the gym together, iron sharpens iron, and, and and there's not many people that could beat them on the planet, man. And so, yeah, yeah, fight though, man. Yeah, Luke like, Rockhold versus um Robert Whitaker. Yeah, yeah, like we should touch on that when we get a chance. Uh, uh but yeah, on GSP thing, um, like I'm pretty sure Dana's done with him. Dana hates shit like he hates shit like this. He hates. Fighters that fucking, you know, pull out and, you know, take the ball and run with it. GSP ran with the ball before. I think I just said this on the review show when we uh, slightly spoke about it. It's just, dude, come on, man. Like, like, why come back? I mean, I don't know if he came back for the paycheck or he came back to, like, make himself feel like he still got it. But that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather, I'd rather for him to pass the torch or even beat Whitaker and, like, just, like, claim his – him itself as still being one of the best ever, but to come and to take a title, if you didn't win a title, if you didn't win a title, I I give it two shits. But you hey, win a title, man. You run hey, title, he ruined Brisbane career, man. Hey, he ruined Brisbane yeah. career, man. I love how Brisbane was not a good look. I love how Brisbane that was not a good look, man. Still was not a good look for Brisbane. I love Brisbane stills. He still be on Fox Sports. With the title on the table, like he never lost it. Brisbane is a motherfucking nut, though. I had to laugh at him, like he's annoying sometimes, but actually he's he got a good sense of humor. You know, what I'm saying like he comes to that belt every yeah. time on, uh, on um, UFC uh, fight night or UFC talk, whatever, 
and he has that belt on the table like he never lost it. He's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, it, it's stupid. Hey, but I want you to say this before we go forward. As far as GSP, I want I want the whole tattoo audience. I want everybody that's listening to get this on the record. That this is facts. I want you to say that George St. Pierre is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Uh, you know what? I, I ain't say time. Hey, 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 I ain't say the greatest of all time. I say it like Don King. He's the greatest of all time. Put an S on that time. I say this because I can't take He's the man. GOAT, man. He's the GOAT. I'm biased as fuck because I'm an Aaron Civil fan to the day I die. I'm loyal. I'm a fucking Aaron Civil mark. So I can't give him that title, not especially not on fucking air. But I will say he has did something that most people cannot do in, uh, in, like in two divisions that's hard to even do that. So I give him his props. Like he is one of the greatest. But all time will always be Anderson Silva to me. I'll always be Anderson Silva because that's my boy. But, yeah, no, no, GSP, I give him his props. I, I, I never disrespect him as a fighter. I, I just disliked them as a performer, as in, you know, being a finisher or being a person that, you know, stamped his way of being, okay, I'm a dominant champion. He was really a dominant champion. Well, he was dominant in his own way, but he was dominant humping people's leg. But anyway, um, let's touch on the Rocco and um, Whitaker thing, though. Uh, with GSP not in, 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 the, in the diamond. So this is going to be whoever wins is champion uh, straight up, right? It's not just, you know, uh, continue to interim, interim Yeah, team. whoever wins is champion straight up. Like um, uh, like Robert Whitaker, he's officially the undisputed champion. So the interim okay. champion is okay. no longer Robert Whitaker. He's he's now the undisputed champ. So that that belt that GSP and Bisbee have is like um, those belts are retired now. So his okay. belt is off. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, his belt is the only active. He went out for a second. Oh, he went out again. Uh. Testing, 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 testing. You're good. You're good. All right. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but I'm looking forward to that fight, man. I'm looking forward to that fight. No, me too. I I don't know who's going to win. No, me too. I, you know what? I I actually, see, you know what? In my mind, I want to say to myself that Rocco could be GSP. So I'm kind of fine with Rocco being in that, in that place, uh, replacing GSP for that. You know, just like making it the title relevant again, as it being one specific title. So, I don't mind Rocco being there. I think he 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 can get GSP. I think GSP will get get caught by Rocco. But yeah, this fight. Think about Whitaker is like it's hard because like for some reason I feel like Yomero really didn't try his best. Not saying try his best, like he was. I think he, I don't know, it's so, he was off. It wasn't the same uh, Royal Romero that we know that goes in there, balls to the raw, and try to finish the fight. He's, I don't say he sweeps with the fences. He always technical. He always makes sure he, he picks the spots so to finish a, finish a person. But I don't know, something was wrong with him in that fight. Something was weird. I didn't say he was injured or anything like that. But mentally, I think he had, he pressured himself. I think he had put too much pressure on his back of trying to win that to, you know, be where he needs to be at to be the man. Uh, but anyway, um, I think Rocco is a different beast. Whitaker, he's still a mystery, but I think Rocco will get this. I, I think Rocco is, I think it's Rocco time. I think Whitaker, uh, he might be, he kind of might be a, 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 a Chris Wyman. He's like that Chris Wyman type guy. It's like, it's like he's. Uh, you, you say, would you say here like, like Robert Whitaker remind you of Chris Wyman? Yeah, like. He's not like a he's like, like he got like that rocky feeling like Chris Wilder like when he went up against Anderson he's like it kind of had like a rocky feel to it like rocky like, you know what I mean like, so you say he like rocky like the underdog <laughs> no not, not the underdog just, that's but he on top you no, know? Not, no not, not even really just that I mean just, every fight pretty much no not, not even just he's the underdog against Jacare he was the underdog against Joel Romero true he but, was gonna be the underdog against GSP true, and now true. he's the underdog against Rocco like true. you know. True. No, but it's not even. It's not even just that. It just. It just like his style, is so simple. It's so basic. But I'm not saying that he's not good when he does, because <clears throat> like with his basic style, he goes in there and, and makes sure he wins the fight. He's like just that's how Chris Wyman, Wyman was. He he really had nothing. Great. He was just good at you know. 
he had basic style, but he was good at what he did. Where he's good at, he made sure he used his best ability, used his tools to win the fight. And that's how Whitaker is. You know what I'm saying? But I think Rocco, yeah, I think you know what you mean. Like he's he's like he's he's good at everything. He's exceptional at everything, but he's not extraordinary at one thing. You know. Yeah, like, like a guy like Ortega, like Brian Ortega, he might be the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in the, in the MMA, you know what I mean? Like, or yeah, a guy like right. Anderson Silva and his striking, or Connor and his striking, like some of the best strike. Like, he's not, I think you mean. Yeah, yeah, like, to me, with I, you too. Like, he's good, good everywhere, but he's not great in one area, you know? Yeah, like, the, my thing too is, like, Rocco is universal. I think Rocco is great, like, way better athlete and way better like, fighter. Rocco, BJJ. Rocco, he, 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 BJJ, his wrestling is really, really good, but Rocco's bread and butter is his jiu-jitsu, man, his submissions off his back or on top. He got good striking, too, though. I, I, I like his, you know, his kicking style. His, his kickboxing is good. I think he's a kickboxer, too. But that's why I think, like, I, I think he's got more of uh, a uh, uh, variety than Whitaker. But like I said, just like Chris Weidman, and it still have more variety than him. And I don't, I don't even use himself, but you know. at, the, at the end of the day, you gotta think of it like this too. That has that has mastered the basics. The basics win fights, and not only do the basics win fights. That's true. Like most guys that master the basics, they don't get knocked out because the basics yeah. keep you safe. No, no, so no, you no. don't get knocked out. So you front. So you make fewer mistakes because in fighting, a lot of times it's not even about who's better. But sometimes the guy that's better doesn't Still win, shit. like Still a Ricardo Lama yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, situation. Yeah. But it's about who makes the fewer mistakes. Yeah, your fight. Who your makes fight. the fewer mistakes? Who's tighter with the basics? Yeah, your fight IQ. Yep. And, and, and that's what I mean. Like I say, like like I say, like he doesn't have. Uh, he's not. He's not as. He doesn't have more variety as Rocco. But like I said, like he's a guy that uses what is he, uses tools that he's good at, and is patient. To execute a finish, like that's like like kind of like Wyman. He takes his time. He picks he, he picks his punches. He, you know he picks when he's like okay I want to take a takedown. I mean like he, he his fighting IQ is good. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying like like I said like to me when I look at him like uh oh, like this guy is kind of boring, but and I think Rocco is a better fighter. But for what I see with his fighting IQ, he probably can get it done. But I'm gonna pick Rocco in this fight. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing predictions ahead of time, but I, I, I can't wait to see. I mean, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think it's gonna be interesting. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a boring fight at all. But it should be interesting. Um, do you got anything else for our top talk? What's the top talk of the of our top talk of the week? Man, that pretty much wraps up wraps up our top talk for this week, Apollo. Man, but I'm oh, definitely what? looking forward to next week. Yeah. And uh, man, next week. You know, the big end of the year card and your girl cyber your boy your girl cyborg you know we gonna cyborg. see man we'll see if she the real deal or not because we gonna hey, find out with holly hey, holmes <laughs> put some paws on her hey does you holly holmes put the paws some paws on her hey, and, uh, hey, and i get caught slipping hey does you said sleep you put chicks sleep you said cyborg you said cyborg your, your, yep cy your girl, cyborg. cyborg and holly holmes i know you said cyborg holly holmes so yeah you heard me we gonna see man you said side boy though. You got huh? side. You got a side boy for a second. <laughs> you said. Yo, you I said, said yo. cyborg. I said. This. No, the first time you said side boy. You say, oh, you say. <laughs> you crazy? So you say. Yo, you, you know what? I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> I, I definitely apologize if I said that. I meant side boy. If it might have came out side boy, uh, because I do not want to disrespect Miss Chris Cyborg. Whatsoever, oh, I would not want her to to choke me or to beat me down on the street, and I respect her. So, I, my bad, cyborg. Hey, um, there you go, right there. Speaking <laughs> of women, speaking of women, I have news. So it's kind of old. I, I, I even, oh, go ahead. It's kind of old, but um, uh, I speak. I want to speak on it on the top talk before when I was doing wrestling, but I just you know decided I'm gonna delay on the wrestling thing, a uh, pro wrestling thing. Um. Uh, Runner Rousey, did we talk about this? Runner Rousey uh, uh, signing with the WWE. Did we talk about this yet? I can't remember. No, I did not know that. Are you yeah. breaking some news, man? Yeah. So Runner Rousey pretty much is in works uh, wrestle with the WWE. Um, and on top of that, there's rumors because they they announced you know WWE trying to 
you know, break, you know, barriers with the women division. Because, I mean, it's truthfully, truthfully, they have women that actually can wrestle like guys now. Back then, uh, for a while, for the last decade or a little bit more, women just been cat fights and brawls and panties and just, like, know how to roll around and do a couple bumps but not really technically wrestle or, you know, a technician in the ring. But they got women now that can actually, you know, do what guys do. Like the old school women, you know, especially in Japan. But anyway, so now they're trying to have these women do all these breaking these barriers, doing the hell in the cells, stuff like that. Hopefully, they don't do a uh, elimination chamber because that'd be super ridiculous. But anyway, so they announced this week. And I can imagine how much Vince is paying her, man. Vince is probably paying her an arm and a leg. But, like, man, all the movies after she lost Holly Holm, all the movies fell out. Yeah. And, like, Eight different movies that was in the works. So the main one was the Dalton, like the remake of Roadhouse with a female bouncer. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're taking a Patrick Swayze character. And that's, 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 that, it sounds over the top. Like, that's not over the top. Think about, yeah, Cyborg is one of the bouncers. She'll be beating, she'll be beating motherfuckers down. You feel me? Motherfuckers yeah. get out of pocket, she'll be beating them down, choking them out, throwing them outside on the concrete. Yeah, like, oh, it's unrealistic. No, that shit's realistic as fuck. If you got the right woman in there, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, her, her girl, Shayna Baylor, Baszler, she signed, like, months ago, and she's debuting the NXT, and, like, they're pumping her good. Like, I, I, I was a big on her. I seen her in that tournament they had for WWE, uh, May Young Classic, and I was a big, big on her through the whole tournament because she, her, most of her matches was, it, it was garbage. But the last one was good, but that's because they had, because they filmed it ahead of time, they aired it, like a month or two later, so they had time for the, the finalists to go over their match. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they choreographed that whole match. But her movesets looked good in that. You know? But anyway, uh, she signed too. So like Rousey's a, a huge WWE fan too. So uh, Rousey fought right behind her, which probably take her shine. But um, yeah, it's rumors of um, even the whole four horsewomen because uh, one of the other girls from Hor horsewomen, husband is a wrestler. He's an NXT. he be been wrestling for years. Roger Strong. So it's a rumors that the four horse women, uh, in, I mean, uh, sorry, of MMA will face the four, four horse women of WWE in WrestleMania. But there's also rumors that came up. Hey, since, they can. Hey, they can really do that because none of them they, they girls are in the UFC anymore. Yeah, no, yeah, they, 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 it's about doing that. And uh, uh, um, the only ones that that's, I think, I think um, uh, the other one is skinny one. Her name. She's training with Ronda in LA right now. And anyway, um, so. There's rumors that Ronda also is planning to enter the Royal Rumble, so that was that would be huge. So um, my only concern about that Royal Rumble is I've been a battle Royals and they're not hard really. Uh, if you're not winning, pretty much when you're ready to go out, you tell people you're ready to go out and toss me the fuck out. But Royal Rumble, hey, that could that would be hella cool. Like if she came out as number thirty or something, they'll do it. I, I mean, I got feeling yeah, that'd do be it. hella cool. I got feeling they'll do it. Uh, because they, 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 and then she they, come out to she come out to the music she used to um, she used to walk to the ring too like the, whatever that song is yeah, man. yeah uh, the that she used to come out when she fought same same song consistently you know? yeah, yeah. yeah so people but, will recognize this you know? they, they will do that because they got to set her up for WrestleMania uh, uh, it's also rumors that she probably wrestled with one girl named Oscar she's like undefeated anyway um, I was say um, yeah so she must be in the Royal Rumble my only issue is. Uh, like I said, battle royals are not hard. Somebody tell you to, to get, you know, ready, whatever you're ready to get knocked out or take out the Royal Rumble or battle royal, you just let somebody know and they take you out. But Royal Rumbles are different because it's WWE and it, they're they're more about tell a storyline and spots and you know little spots in between. And the girls got to do the same thing the guys do is do a lot of spots and tell stories, and that's all about caring to each other. And I'm scared that these girls are still, even though they're good enough to wrestle like the guys and carry people, to carry on a Royal Rumble for like 30 or 45 minutes, you know, in there and keep it going without doing fucking a bunch of botches, it's going, it's going to be... Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? It, yeah, I don't think they'll do that. It, but I got to because that's how Royal Rumble is. You got to tell a story. It's more than just throwing people out. It's, it's telling a story now. Like, every time somebody come in, it's a story or main characters stories will be played out and I know run to get in there she's going to definitely be lost unless they they uh, train with her do how to do it but anyway 
that's the rumor. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens. I, I think Royal Rumble uh, week, I mean, Road WrestleMania, she will be involved with that big time. She will come out come out during the Royal Rumble. And, yes, she probably get paid big, big buku money, better than any woman that signed uh, onto oh. WWE that's not, you know, talent that was already on there. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's our top talk of the day. As usual, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button. Tune in. Leave your comments. And as always, people, please keep it testing.